Hi guys, happy Monday. Okay, so today I'm going to discuss with you this very important aspect of buying and selling called the appraisal. Okay, so if you are a seller and an agent comes to your house to talk about pricing, what an agent will do, hopefully, almost all the time, is they will bring comparable, they will have already done some research and found comparable properties in your neighborhood that have sold and are on the market, but that have sold within the last six months. Okay. That is in order to get a good price for your home, right? Because if you live in a neighborhood and you've got a one story and you've, it's X amount of uh, square feet and blah, 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 they're going to look for any properties that are close in comparison to yours that have sold in the last six months so that you can be on target with pricing, right? So you aren't overpricing your home to where there's no proof that anyone has paid anybody paid that amount of money for a house similar to yours in the past six months, or that you're not um, asking enough money, which is very rarely what happens. Most of the time, sellers think that their house is worth much more than it actually is. Sorry, but it's true. Anyway, so why would it? Why does a real uh, for? Besides all the reasons I just said that make a lot of sense, the other reason that an agent does that and we don't go past more than six months and we try and keep it in the neighborhood is because once you get your house on the market and we get a buyer for your house, they're going to be financing and the lender is going to require an appraisal. Yeah. So an appraiser is going to come out there. They're going to look at comps from the last six months and they're going to have this little fancy Nancy formula that they use but based on your home. Like let's say your house has... A smaller patio than some of the other comps so then they deduct a little bit of your value right because it's not exactly the same right but they try and get as close as they possibly can okay because you don't want your house not to appraise right okay now let's talk about what happens if it does if you're a seller and you have your home under contract with a buyer for two hundred and ten thousand dollars and the appraisal comes in at two hundred got a $10,000 difference. Okay, so that means that the lender for the buyer is not going to give them 200 and is not going to lend them $210,000. Yes? It's not going to lend them that sales price. Because if you think about the mind of the lender, they're in, they're investing in this home and they're not going to overpay for it. Right? Okay. So, there are a couple options of what to do if that happens. Number 1, buyer and seller can split the difference in cash right? Seller brings five, 5,000 more to the table. I mean, buyer brings 5,000 more to the table. Seller deducts 5,000 off and, and loses $5,000. Yes. The buyer can bring the entire difference, right? In my little scenario I gave, that's 10 grand. That's probably not going to happen. Most buyers aren't walking around with an extra $10,000 to bring to closing on top of their down payment and all of their closing costs, right? Okay. Third option is this, uh, the seller just lumps it and they lower the price all the way down to the appraised value. Okay. Of course, the fourth and worst option is that the seller says, nope, F that, and they cancel the contract. Now, this is the least smart thing to do because the chances of you getting an appraisal that's going to be different within the next three or four months, you put the house back on the market and getting it appraised at what you think it's worth are very slim, right? For a number of reasons. If it's an FHA appraisal, that appraisal is going to be stuck to that house for six months. If it's um, a conventional appraisal, the other appraisers have access to the previous appraisals. And they're going to look at that and go, well, I can't validate $10,000 more. Right? Bottom line is the buyer and seller need to come to an agreement. Okay. Now, we avoid this happening at all by pricing the property properly in the beginning. Right? You don't get to tell your agent, well, these other houses don't have the this, you know, expensive wood that I put down. If the other houses have wood and your house has hardwood and you just paid more for yours because you liked the, the stain on it or whatever the hell you did extra, you're not going to get that back. I hope you enjoyed it. That's the facts. I hope you enjoyed your floors because you're not getting it. You're not getting all of your investment back. It's a hard truth. It's the truth. Okay. So. You can also appeal an appraisal, right? So the lender can, you know, the lender will probably call you and say, hey, can you find some comps that, that support this price? Because the comps they have don't. That's why it appraised low. And then you can try and appeal. Hmm. It hardly ever works. So it's another reason that pricing is so important on both sides. Um, I had a deal last month where the appraisal came in 
quite lower than the uh, contracted sales price. And at first, the sellers were balking, and they were like, oh, nope, we're not moving. You need to come up with that $6,000. And I'm like, no, my clients aren't paying, overpaying $6,000 more for the house. That's not happening, because now, you, now you're asking someone to overpay for something, right? Because... Well, that was fun. You're asking someone to overpay for something because the proof is in the pudding. It's in what the appraiser says, right? We can disagree all day, but it's the facts. So keep that in mind when you're going to price your home because you can you can list your home for whatever the hell you want. But if a buyer's not willing to pay the price and and it's not gonna be and it's not gonna appraise, you're just you all you've done is put a cool sign in your yard and put it on the internet. It's not going to sell. So, make sure your home is being priced properly. When you're going to do home renovations and, and add things to your home that you want, keep in mind how much value is actually going to be added. That's a good time to call your realtor friend and just say, hey, I'm thinking about putting these fancy, fancy, fancy hand-scraped hardwood floors in my house and you know, I think that I wanna add $10,000 to my value. Well, call me and we can talk about it. I'll tell you, you're not gonna get all that money back out. But that's not what everything's about, right? People build a pool. You very, you don't build a pool to add the twenty grand onto your value because that's not what happens. It's like twenty five thousand dollars for a pool or whatever it is. You're not gonna get all. You can't add that. Just tack that on the end of your price of your home when you go to sell it. Not how it works. So, bottom line is, um, appraisal is always a you know not always, but sometimes it's a scary day, especially if if you the realtor and the seller. If I've t told you like, hey. We're at the top of the market here. We're at the very tippy tippy top. We may run into some issues during appraisal, right? That's always kind of nerve wracking, but I make sure that I'm there on the day that the appraisal the appraisal happens, talking to the appraiser, blah, blah, blah. So all that to be said, it's another time where pricing is very important. The only time there is not an appraisal is if somebody's buying cash. Obviously, if someone is paying cash for the property, they don't, they're not required to do anything because it's their money. But Cash buyers are few and far between, as we all know. So, you know, relying on that to overprice your home is stupid. So, anyway, I just wanted to talk about that today because it's something that just came up. And um, it's another little facet of buying and selling real estate. And more proof of why you need a realtor. The number one thing I see with for sale by owners is their houses are overpriced. Every time some Joe Blow off the streets, like, I don't need an agent, I'm selling my house myself, they're always overpriced. Always. That's why 90% of people who start out as for sale by owners end up getting a realtor because their house doesn't sell. Number one reason, it's overpriced. Number two, no exposure because they don't have access to all the websites and all the things that agents do. Anyway, that's a whole other conversation. But, so pricing's important. Pricing your home realistically with, com with comparables to support it is the most important. That's what agents are here for. So, call me. Let's talk about it. Call me before you put those new floors in. Call me before you put that 14 karat gold sink in your bathroom or whatever. Call me first. You better like it. Bye, right, guys. Have a good day. Oh, and stay warm. Brr.